explain the following terms, food irradiation. So this is a technology or the use of short light radio waves that reduces or eliminates microorganisms or pathogenic bacteria and insects, which improves its uh, safety, its acceptability, its shelf life. So it just eliminates the bad, basically. Next, the glycemic index of food. What if I pronounce that as glycemic? Would you guys just lose lose faith in me as your like YouTube tutor? Would you be like, nah, I'm done with this guy. <laughs> Unsubscribe, boom. 3.1.2. It measures how much a food containing carbohydrates will raise uh, the blood glucose level on a scale of 1 to 100. So just carbs, just raising blood glucose. Explain the meaning of each of the following date markings found on food labels. So 3.2.1, best before. So this is just the end period that the product will remain at its best quality and products are safe for consumption after this date. Next, the use by date. So product should not be consumed after this date. Um, it shows the period for which the product will be of good quality or safe to eat. I know for a lot of you, it's like these all mean the same thing. Yeah, I know. But like it's it's very like, you know, like nitpicky. Like you got to know these little definitions, guys. These little definitions, guys. Uh, next, sell by. The last date that products should be offered to sell but can still be consumed after the date. So it's the last date that products should be offered to sell. Next, 3.3, state ways in which the transmission of foodborne diseases can be prevented. Well, there are numerous ways here, so just look top right, I believe. A person must wash their hands before touching food or after using the toilet or changing nappies. Uh, an infected person or person with symptoms uh, should not prepare food. So just if you are feeling a little bit sick, you know, don't, don't get near the food. You don't want to transmit any bad, bad things. Uh, raw foods must be washed washed thoroughly uh, in clean, safe water before being used to prevent infection. So raw foods as well. Uh, utensils used to prepare raw foods must be washed thoroughly after use. And yeah, that, that should be enough for the question. Just a, a fifth one for funsies. Um, just clean your work surfaces properly. Yeah. 3.4, differentiate between organic foods and genetically modified modified foods. So organic, GMOs, well, not GMOs, just <laughs> GMFs, according to the given criteria. So for, uh, let's just do organic foods first, right? So organic foods, uh, they take a long time to grow. You know, it's, it's organic. We need nature to run its course. The yield, it's a very low yield, to be honest with you. Um, you know, it's not a very like imperialistic, capitalistic kind of way. Like we, you know, just food, 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 money, money, money. It's not like that. They have a natural shelf life and they don't last very long. And there are higher production costs here, a little bit more expensive and not everyone can afford them. So yeah, it's just, it's high in general, but genetically modified foods, short time to grow. Shop, shop, quick, quick. They have a really, like a really big yield. So more people can be fed. In terms of shelf life, it has a very long shelf life. So it can last longer than organic foods and cost. Uh, it's a lower production cost. Therefore, it's more affordable and more accessible to everyone. So it's going to be low. But this is a lot healthier. Organic foods are a lot healthier than genetically modified foods. 3.5. Read the statement below and answer the questions that follow. So tinned fish or tin fish is becoming increasingly popular in South Africa. So explain how tin fish can help with the prevention of osteoporosis. Okay, so just some bone issues. So tin fish with bones is a good source of calcium, which is required for building strong bones, increasing bone density, and therefore decreasing bone loss. So it's good for bone density. Pulchids, which is the fish here, it's a typically oilier fish. It's a good source of vitamin D and phosphorus, which is required for the absorption of calcium and incorporation of calcium to the bones. Uh, the protein in the fish is necessary for normal collagen synthesis, which assist in preventing uh, osteoporosis or so some collagen synthesis there. Nice little question.